Good afternoon and welcome to the Springfield Central State High School 2020 Sports Awards Afternoon. My name is Miss Jenkins and I'm the Sports Coordinator at Springfield Central State High. I'd like to welcome our Principal, Miss Ann Lawson, and the Deputy Principals, as well as our special guest speaker, Brian Curl, this afternoon. Welcome also to our parents, family and friends, staff and students watching the ceremony from afar. Although this year has been one like no other, it is pleasing that we are able to celebrate your achievements. Sport allows us to develop resilience when things do not go our way. And I'm of the, of the belief that your success this year is true testament to that. Please be upstanding for the national anthem performed by Nalene Tongia. Thank you, Narlene. Please be seated. I would like to invite school captain Ava Sorgel to the podium to, for the acknowledgement to country. Good afternoon. I am Ava Sorgel, a descendant of Durumbul people. Before we celebrate our successful sporting culture, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we gather here today, the Jagara, Yagara and Yurupur peoples. I would also like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I recognise their connection to our country and their role for caring and maintaining our country over thousands of years. May their strength and wisdom be with us throughout this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. I would now like to invite Ms Lawson to, develop, uh, to deliver the principal's address. Thanks very much, Mrs Jenkins. A warm welcome to everyone to our annual sports award event. In preparation today, I looked back on my speech from last year. Interestingly, in the 2019 awards ceremony marked the opening of our community sports hall. And it was the first opportunity for the local community to experience this fantastic facility. 12 months on, who would have thought that we would be unable to invite parents and friends to this event due to a worldwide pandemic? So, I also, would like to say a special hello and welcome to parents, carers, other family members and friends who will be watching the recording of this very special ceremony. Perhaps a positive to the situation is that our ceremony may reach more people who may have been unable to attend a nighttime event. Who knows, some of our remote audience members may include your grandparents or cousins or good friends from interstate or even overseas. I would also like to note how fortunate we are to be able to gather and celebrate sporting achievements after the interrupted and chaotic year we have had. COVID-19 has highlighted for me what we truly value in life 
And for me personally, at home and professionally, at school, the absence of sport has had a great impact. I have shared with you before that I have two sons, one in year 11, William, and Joe in year 12, and they love their basketball. I've got a photo up here today of them playing together in the recent All Schools basketball comp. You may not be able to see it all that well. I understand directly the impact not having sport in your life uh, will have on people because I have seen the impact that it had on Joe and Will. They missed the physical activity, routine, learning new skills, role models and friendships. I am sure all our athletes sitting here would have experienced the same. As a parent, I too missed the sporting community, watching my boys compete, as well as the social interactions, but I certainly didn't miss being on the score bench. Our usual busy lives with basketball stopped. It was then with much joy and excitement for my family when we were able to welcome the return of sport, even with the new COVID-19 safety plans. As a school, we celebrated the gala days and any opportunities students had to compete and participate in school, school sport. I still remember the fantastic feeling of walking into this hall during the gala days soaking up the atmosphere of competition with five or so other schools. Sport is an important and integral part of who we are as a school. And with the hall, the surrounding sporting fields and our local clubs, we are determined for our students to have the opportunities to shine in a variety of sports. We are at the moment designing the next four years with our strategic plan and certainly sport will be playing a very important role in that time to come. Students, you are to be congratulated for your participation, dedication, talent, and the spirit that you bring to your sport, whether it be in a team or individual pursuit. I thank you for representing your school and doing this with pride. Parents and other family members, our sporting commitments and achievements could not happen without your support. I thank you for your interest, organisation and realisation of the great value sport can play in a young person's life. With World Teachers Day coming up this month, it is also timely to show appreciation to the Springfield Central State High School staff who contribute to our sporting program. I thank you for your care, your expertise and realisation that part of being a great school is valuing and supporting opportunities to compete in sport. Thank you to the organisers today, Mrs Galvari, Ms Jenkins and Mrs Fletcher and the HPE team. It certainly has been an interesting um, process in terms of working out the best way to present the sports awards ceremony. I would also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge our student compares. It takes confidence to present in front of a live and remote crowd. It's wonderful to have Brian Curl here today. He's an absolute legend in the basketball world and beyond. And he is to be congratulated for being a true person in terms of his contribution to the community. So Brian, we're thrilled that you are here today. Thank you. Again, my thanks to you all. Enjoy the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Lawson, for those kind words. I now have the great privilege of introducing the 2020 House Captains who will be assisting with the running of the afternoon ceremony. Apollo House Captains, Jaden Ingram and Chase Woods. Artemis House Captains Katrina O'Grady and Yandel Fadilofa, Athena, Tara Hewitt and Sophie Kay, and Poseidon House Captains Casey Jorgensen and Clinton Tabalinu.
Today we are gathered to celebrate the outstanding achievements of students from Springfield Central State High School. As this is a formal occasion, we ask that all students hold applause until the end of the announcements of each category. Please enjoy the media presentations throughout the afternoon as they will give you an insight into our sporting events this year. Spread it back. I would like to invite Artemis House Captain Katrina O'Grady and Miss Sarah Poole to the stage to announce our Swimming Age Champions. We started the year with a splash at our Inter House Swimming Carnival at the Bundamba Swim Centre. This year brought a change in the format with all Year 7 and Year 12 students attending as well as the swimming competitors from years 11 to 8. It was amazing to see so many students in their house colours lining the pool to cheer on the swimmers. Overall, the day was a huge success with all students giving their all whilst in the pool and cheering on their ha house participants. Thank you to all the members of the PE department for organising the swimming carnival this year. The overall results were 4th place, Athena House, 3rd place, Poseidon House, Second place, Apollo House, and first place, Artemis House. Please hold your applause until the end. Congratulations to the following students. Swimming age champion, boys year 12, Alexander Head. Swimming age champion, girls, 12 years, Lucy Collins. Swimming age champion, boys, 13 years, Noah Wilson. Swimming age champion, boys, 14 years, Luke Masco. Swimming age champion, girls, 13 years, Zara Brimble. Swimming age champion, girls, 14 years, Amelia Oll. Swimming age champion, boys, 15 years, Noah Zadli Irwan. Swimming age champion, girls, 15 years, Georgia Backman. Swimming age champion, boys, 16 years, Cooper Jackson. Swimming age champion, girls, 16 years, Shania Llewellyn. Swimming age champion boys in 17 to 19 years, Hunter Brown. Swimming age champion girls, 17 to 19 years, Asha Stockman. Please congratulate the 2020 swimming age champions. 
Before you leave the stage, Miss Paul, can you please draw a ticket for the first lucky door prize and announce the winner? Tia Vavo. Please welcome the Artemis House Captain Yandor Fatilofa and Mr. English to present the awards for the Summer Inter School Sports Competition. This year saw the Agra District Interschool Sport Competition revert back to the Gala Day format, where all teams played in a round robin competition with the two highest teams participating in a grand final. Our year started with nine teams participating in the summer season. 
with our students participating in basketball, touch football and volleyball. Congratulations to all students involved in the summer season. Each year we award a most valuable player from each inter-school sport team in each season. The most valuable player is awarded to the player who shows a high level of skill, teamwork and sportsmanship while carrying out our core values of respect, responsibility, relationships and lastly resilience. Please hold your applause until the end of the announcement of our MVPs. Yes, 7-8 boys basketball, Xavier Young. Yes, 7-8 boys touch football, William McSpaden. Yeah, nine, ten, boys fo uh, touch football, Jesse Burley. Yes, yeah, seven, eight, girls touch football, Tyler Vaval. Yeah, nine, ten, girls touch football, Taniqua Bannerman. Open Girls Touch, Aliyah Nuku. Yes, seven, eight, boys volleyball, Bodhi Icon. Yeah, nine, ten, boys volleyball, Caesar Collins. And lastly, open boys volleyball, Bryce Nuku. Congratulations to all students. I would like to invite Apollo House Captain Chase Woods, Poseidon Captain Clinton Tavalinu, and Mr. Gurky to the stage to present the awards for the Winter Interschool Sports Competition. Our most valuable player for basketball, year 9-10 boys, Darius Ford. Most valuable player, year 11, 12 girls, Chloe Ackland. Most valuable player, basketball, year 11, 12 boys, Jaden Ingram. Most valuable player, netball, year 7, 8 girls, Tyler Vival. Most valuable player netball, year nine, 10 girls, Ava Jonasson. Most valuable player netball, year 11, 12 girls, Tiara Vaval Moffat. Most valuable player football, year seven, eight boys, Danny Cho. Most valuable player, football, year 11, 12 boys, James Bonzalik. Most valuable player, football, year 11, 12 boys, Nigel Ziambi. Most valuable player, football, year 7, 8 girls, Tara Marshall. Most valuable player, volleyball, year 7, 8 girls, Gloria Nasongan. Most valuable player, volleyball, year 9, 10 girls, Ira Sharniri. Most valuable player, volleyball, year 11, 12 girls, Talia Kotea. Most valuable player, rugby league, year 7, 8 boys, Nephi Pitta. 
Most valuable player, rugby league, 9-10 boys, Jazea Scanyon. Please congratulate all award recipients. Some of our sporting teams had great success at their gala day and were able to overcome the competition to bring back the district premiership. We invite Mr. Margosis to the stage to help acknowledge their efforts. Congratulations to the year sevens and eights girls touch team, the year nine and tens boys touch team, and the year nine and tens boys basketball teams. With the following from the year nine and tens boys touch team come onto the stage. Ethan Bartlett, Harrison Lang. Jason Bauer. Jaden James. Jesse Burley, Carl Rosa, Kathy Spencer, Malachi Jaconia. Toby Farmuina, and Wudamu Teafi. Can we please give a round of applause to the year nine and tens boys touch team? Can the following from the year nine and tens boys basketball team please come onto the stage? Caesar Collins. Corey Vincent. Darius Ford. David Onyo Gazuri. Desna Elisaya. Ethan Bartlett. Jordan Mandariono. Joshua Fletcher.
Carl Vincent Cook. And Tobias Farmuina. Can we please give a round of applause to the year nine and ten's boys basketball team? Would the following from the year seven and eight girls touch football team please come onto the stage? Anaya Rudra. Bianca O'Grady. Emilia McLaughlin. Jason Tanielli. Miley Williamson. Sirapreet Kaur. Chantal Sibritsky. Harmony Mufi Talia Bannerman and Tyler Vabal. Can we please give a round of applause to the year sevens and eights girls touch football team. Our inter-school sports season would not be possible without the dedication and hard work from our wonderful coaches. There is so much time and effort that goes into coaching both before and after school and the students are incredibly appreciative of your support. Thank you to all staff that have been involved in this year's sport at Springfield Central. Please congratulate all MP MVPs in 2020. Thank you, Mr. Margosis. Can you please draw our lucky prize draw winner? Chantal Sobritsky. Can I please ask Tara Hewitt and our special guest for this afternoon, Brian Curl, to please take the stage for the Springer Sports interview. Well, welcome. Uh, my first question I have for you today is just to tell you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, um, just before I start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the elders past, present and emerging for having me here, but also making this great land available. Thank you. Um, what was the question? <laughs> just to tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, how long we got? All right, I've been in basketball for 55 years. 
okay? Now, I know your kids would like to hear all of it, so you don't have to go back to class, but uh, I don't think the teachers would take too kindly to it. But my, my basketball career started uh, way back in 1965, okay? Um, and those of you who are thinking how old I am, I'm 75, okay? And uh, st still fairly active, which I appreciate. But I used to play a lot of tennis, and I used to go to all the, the tournaments around with a few mates of mine. And um, one year we decided I was always tall, but, and I was very skinny, not like I am today. And we decided to go to the Wollongabba Police Boys Club where uh, we wanted to do some weights and build our body, bodies up. And uh, the police officer on the front counter kept annoying me and pestering me that I was tall and I should play basketball. Why don't I give it a try? So after three weeks of this, I decided to go out the, the back of the PCYC at the Gabba and um, had a tryout. I uh, quit tennis the next week. Um, I believe life's, uh, we, we're dealt things in life that are meant to be and somehow or other, as it's turned out, it was meant to be. So I, s I played the whole season with um, uh, a team of boys that were, uh, played soccer with the, um, uh, but in the off season they played basketball. And uh, we went through the season undefeated and lost to the grand final to Lang Park Police Boys Club. So. Um, the Oxley boys, they went back to soccer, so I joined Lang Park. So I like to win anyway. So that's where it all started, um, back way back then. And, um, and I, I just had a, a love for the game the first time I went out there on the court. Now, I, I must say, m my first experience, and look in this beautiful building here. You're not going to forget the next question, are you? No. Okay. Um, the court out the back of the police youth club was a concrete floor, uneven, probably about three-quarter size of a court. It had s rusty cyclone fence all around the court, two pretty dilapidated backboards and a couple of 60-watt globes after e over each basketball, uh, each net, sorry, each ring. That's where I started on and I sit in here and you guys are so lucky. You are so lucky and I hope you don't take it for granted what you have here. But that's where I started from there. That was my humble beginnings and I only played basketball here for 18 months in Brisbane. Um, I joined that Lang Park uh, club and we went through the season and won. And uh, then I went to Melbourne in 1966. Um, I was recruited to go down there. Now, part of my story is that I was told when I left Brisbane or before I left that I would never make it down in Melbourne in basketball. I'd be lucky to play Div 2 or Div 3 or something like that, okay? Um, it's going to lead me to something else that I'm going to talk to young people about later, but that was the greatest encouragement or inspiration that I had. You see, I knew what I wanted to do, um, and it was around 1968 where I met and um, watched the Australian 68 Olympic team that went to Mexico, that I wanted to, to be somebody in basketball. I decided that, and I was going to prove those people wrong. And for you young people that are the year 12s who are going out in the world tomorrow and after this year to work, or university, or if you want to take up a sporting career, there's only one person that's going to stop you, and that's yourself. Nobody else can stop you, all right? Nobody stopped me. I decided I was going to make it in basketball, all right, and I did. When I took up coaching, I was told I'd never be able to coach. All right, I never had a grudge against those people or anything like that. I never went up to them after it and said, hey, you know, I went to the 1972 Olympics, I made two world championships teams, and assistant coach at the Seoul Olympics, things like that. I never, never went back at them because I knew in my own mind that I could have done it all the time. And you young people here, you know, the future of tomorrow, you know, we need you and you make the right choices and decisions. And I've got to tell you, you know, I could have gone a little bit the wrong way until I took up sport and played it like I did. It, I was dumb and stupid. I left school at year 10. And I'm not telling you guys to stay in school. I never tell anybody what to do, but I would suggest and recommend to you, stick at it, okay? stick at it because you know, you know you shouldn't have any regrets in life but I have one and that's that I never completed my year 12 
but so I had to make the best out of myself and my life as it was. Okay, so that's how I got started. Okay, so cut out 30 years now, all right? <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, I have another question for you. Uh, what are the most memorable moments of your coaching career? Um, you know, I've had many. Um, you know, representing your country in Olympic Games is something that you cannot, I can't give you the feeling what it's like. I honestly can't. You have to experience it yourself. But that was something that I, I wanted and I wanted to do and, uh, and I achieved it. Um, I believe winning the first 1979 NBL title in Melbourne for the St Tilda Saints, we won it the first two years. So I think that was m memorable occasions. But um, I had a great mentor up here in Brisbane, a man by the name of Vince Hickey, um, who took me under his wing and, you know, he was, he was like a second father to me. Um, to win the 1985 grand final here in Brisbane was is something I, I wanted to do for the city, but also for Vince uh, and my dad, because my dad was a rugby league player and when I told him I was going to take up basketball, he sort of screwed his nose up. So. But uh, he came on side in the end and used to come to most of the games, even though he was a police officer up in um, Richmond and Mount Isa and places like that. Um, uh, you do a lot of work with Indigenous communities. Can you please tell us about some of the work you do in that area? Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough that when I went to school, I always had... Um, young Indigenous classmates. I was very fortunate. So I was brought up in Indigenous um, culture in lots of ways. Um, when I got sacked for the third time in basketball as a coach, um, and if you want to be a professional coach, there's only two types, those who have been sacked and those who are waiting to be sacked, okay? So I wasn't going to wait around anymore. I'd been sacked three times, so I thought enough's enough. And I joined the Queensland Government in Sport and Recreation, and... Um, the then minister, Mr Terry McEnroth, who was a, a, a great man, I thought, and did a lot for sport in Queensland, but he offered me a position in the government to do some programs, uh, which I accepted, and, um, and out of it came, we, we had a uh, program called Deadly Sports that uh, I used to tour all around Queensland with Indigenous sports people like Darrell White, Stevie Ranoff, um, uh, Kelly McKellar, there's so, there's so many of them, you know, softballers, basketballs and all that. And they were great people. And we went from Torres Strait. I think I've been to nearly every community in Queensland. Um, and we delivered programs encouraging the young kids to stay in school and to uh, stay away from drugs and alcohol and, and all those bad choices. But just to encourage them because there's so many Indigenous kids out there with so much talent, but all they need is that opportunity. And, and, you know, we have now some great Indigenous athletes. And in basketball, you know, we've got Paddy Mills from Torres Strait who's playing in the NBA. Paddy's one of the greatest players. I think he is the greatest player that's ever uh, played the game, um, Caucasian or Indigenous. And, and he's a great man and, and uh, he's setting up a program in, Aus in Australia at the moment for Indigenous kids, which I think is fantastic. Nathan J.Y., the big seven-foot-two guy up in Cairns from Bamagar. Um, and my favourite guy is, of course, Danny Morsu, who come from Thursday Island. I took him to, I went to Melbourne in 1966 to play, like I said, and Danny, I brought him down from Cairns. He was only 16. Um, he worked for me, and I got Danny to two Olympic Games, so, or helped Danny get there. He got there himself, but, you know, I was part of it. So those moments are, are, are priceless. They really are. But these, these Indigenous, now I run... Um, Yibba, which is Young Indigenous Basketball Academy, which is open. It's free for all Indigenous people where we give them... We had one yesterday. Um, young people were there. Um, you know, I have elders there. And yesterday I was privileged, uh, a very good friend of mine, Claude Williams, who was the first and only Indigenous coach who has ever been in the NBL. And Claude was there yesterday passing on his knowledge and wisdom to the, to the young Indigenous kids. So I, I really enjoy it and... Um, you know, and, and helping them and getting them to be able to play. Well, I guess leading on from that question, and I can just ask, um, what motivates you to continue coaching? Um, to be honest with you, 
a few years ago, um, it was a number of years ago now, I did give up and stopped and I went through depression. And uh, there was a time when I wouldn't talk about this, but you know, and I think it's a very important subject for all us, all you young people as well. Um, I was depressed because I was very active in, in basketball and, and work and things like that. I've always worked and always played sport. Um, so I decided to come back because basketball really was the only thing I knew. I wasn't smart enough um, you know, to, to run a company or something like that. And I'll tell you, when I, went, when I started with the Queensland government, my first day they sat me in front of a computer and I didn't know how to turn it on. The first week, I think I, um, they had to put extra people on an IT to come down because I jammed the computer up that many times. So I didn't have a clue. That was I learnt, but I learnt, and I, got, I knew I would be. I'm not great at the moment, but I can I can still get by with it. So um, what motivates me now is I definitely don't want to go through depression again. Um, it was a hard time, but I came out of it, and I got back and started up a, a basketball academy. Um, which actually a young boy who um, Rachel and Ben know uh, from Woodcrest, uh, he's in my academy at the moment and, uh, and, you know, and Will's doing very well on the academic side of it. We do a sports diploma and um, so we're giving kids an opportunity that th a lot of these kids don't know what they wanted to do, and especially in that gap year, so it's a 12-month program. So I started that up and then people were asking me if I'd coach them one-on-one -on -one in group sessions. Um, now I'm doing basketball seven days a week. I did six hours yesterday, um, four hours on s Monday. Um, and I do it every day. Every day is basketball. And I enjoy it. And if I can make a difference to young people's lives and tell them my story about you know what I went through and how I got to the top, there's no reason why they can't. And as long as I can inspire people to do that, and one of the, the big words with me is, you've got it here, is the word respect. And um, I am trying to encourage young people to respect their elder people a lot more, a lot better. Times have changed uh, with young people, with our culture and, and things like that. But respect is very big for me. And, and I've yesterday we coached 60 kids um, in in six hours um, and to me I go away from that satisfied so that keeps me going people keep asking me all the time why why don't I quit why don't I step back why don't I take it easy I have about four or five coaches helping me I can't do it all myself um, I go to Jim Boomer I go up here to for you indigenous people in the room I can never pronounce it but Humbi Yimba just up the road here I do work there every Friday afternoons and they're a great bunch of kids, you know, and if we don't turn up, then they're not very happy with me, but they just look forward to us coming um, every week. So those are the things that make you feel that it's worth it, you know, and, and I get great satisfaction out of it. And I was just, I was talking to your principal, uh, Anne, and um, I've just got some government money um, to do what they're calling cohesive communities, which is we want to try and bring communities together a lot more. Um, like my session yesterday, it's, it's just beautiful walking in there and you see all these kids and I've got Chinese kids, Taiwanese kids, Korean kids, Muslim kids, I've got um, indigenous kids, I've got African kids. It's just a fantastic, like, I, I can remember when you would never see that, but I just think it's so great. So um, um, I'm working together, I hopefully, with, um, with people here and they've given me some very good positive feedback this morning that I want to come here and do two of those sessions during next year. We won't have time this year because of new exams and things like that. But next year I want to have a, a girls' day and a, and a boys' day here. Just those are the things that keep me going and, um, and I have a heap of Indigenous programs and I've, I've still got to go up to Torres Strait, I've still got to go out to Charleville and Carnamulla, St George, Sherberg um, and Rockhampton and all those places. So um, I think I'll get through it. <laughs> All right. Guess for a final kind of question, what advice would you give to someone wanting to pursue a career in the sporting industry, whether that be as an athlete, a coach, or any other role? Well, I gave you some advice about coaching, um, but you know, you've got to remember um, in sport, if you're going to play the game, there's only a small percentage. I think it's 0.5 percent that make enough money in Australia to live 
off their earnings in sport. And that includes people like Paddy Mills and um, the cricketers and the tennis players and rugby league players, things like that. So, you know, I think it you, you can do it and uh, it's great if you have that ambition to do it, um, coaching. But there's so many other fields now as well um, in sport that I think is available for young people. Um, not just coaching or playing, but administration, running venues like this, um, running gymnasiums and, and, and all those things. And I think it, it's a good clean and we're getting more health and fitness uh, probably conscious a, as a communities and I think that's very, very important. So, you know, I, I think if you think you want to do that, like I said, hey, go for it. You know, I, I've had the privilege of travelling all over the world just because of playing basketball, all over the world, many, many, many times. I've been to every state in America just playing or coaching basketball over there. Um, so, and I've met many cultures and that's why I, I enjoy doing what I now do, do now because I've been to so many countries and I understand uh, a lot more. I have a bad habit of asking people where they come from, but I, my sons get a bit embarrassed when I do that. But I want to know where people come from because I want to know their background and, and all about their community. I think a lot of our problems with our society is ignorance at the moment. And we shouldn't be ignorant of all the different cultures that we have. And I think that's in very, very important. We've got to learn to live together. We can live together. But it's going to take all of us to do that. And, um, and I hope you know, um, I know I'll live long enough, I probably won't see the, the full benefit of it, but I will see some benefit of it because, you know, there's some wonderful people and, and just looking at these young people collecting their rewards up here um, was just fantastic. It, um, you know, and, and I'm very honoured to be out invited out here today um, by, um, by the school and, uh, you know, I think this, it's a privilege for me to be here and uh, I want to thank you for interviewing me, um, did a great job. Um, and all the speakers up here, you know, you were fantastic. You, you did a, a super job. And um, I questioned a few of the photographs down here, though, some of the looks on the faces, but still and all, that broke up the boredom. So th that was good. But, yeah, no, so, you know, like I said, hey, just get up, dress up, and get out there and do it. Take the world on. Challenge it. Y you can do it, and you can do anything that you want to do. All right? Um, so I've given you... Like I said, there's so many more things that I've did, so many great things and, you know, uh, people I've met, you know, from politicians to great sports people and things like that and having the, the privilege of knowing people like Wayne Bennett who I can call up and a lot of top coaches in Australia and um, which we have a great respect for each other. Well, thank you so much. Um, I just want to say that I've definitely enjoyed listening to you today and I'm sure everyone else here can say the same. You've been such an inspiration to us all and I just hope you can accept a gift on our behalf today. Just behind you. was known for this holding this program. I threw it down a few times, it slipped out of my hand. <laughs> um, but that was a, a thing about me, what I, what I did. So, um, and I had a lot of enjoyment out of it. You know. I didn't enjoy losing, um, you know, which, you know, but I tried to live with it now. <laughs> so thank you. No worries, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> This is how we do it down in Puerto Rico. This is how we do, do it all the time. Down in Vegas, in Miami, down in Paris, in Manhattan, down in LA. This is how we do it. We're going down in the Cadillac, in the backseat, okay. underneath the rising sun. Oh, in the sleep, in the dark, in the dawn, in the future. I want something just like this.
Springfield Central High is part of the Di Yago District Representative School, where we are part of the Central District, competing against 28 other schools, including many private schools. With the increase in the number of schools and students, being selected in a district team to compete in Met West trials has become even more difficult. Being a district representative in 2020 is an exceptional achievement, and we are proud to congratulate the following students on their indi individual success in their chosen sports. Could you please hold your applause till the end of the announcements? Alexander Head for swimming. Hunter Brown for swimming. Adam Hamwe for swimming. Amelia O for swimming. Noah Wilson for swimming. Aisha Stockman for swimming. Gloria Songen for swimming. Joe Williams for volleyball. Zaley Rowley for basketball.
Ethan Bartlett for basketball. David Onyagazri for basketball. And Alia Nuku for netball. Congratulations to all the district re representatives. I would like to call upon the Apollo House Captain, Jaden Ingram, as well as Brian Curl, to come to stage to present the following awards. As mentioned earlier, the Metropolitan West region comprises of five districts, in excess of 100,000 students from more than 200 individual schools. Students from our school compete against, from, compete against students from other districts and if successful are selected to represent Mes Met West at the Queensland State Championships. Congratulations to our 2020 Met West representatives, Kira Cooley, football 16 to 19 years girls, Jackson Gosner, baseball, 12 to 14 years boys. Cooper Gosner, baseball, 14 to 18 years boys. And softball, 14 to 18 years boys. Harmony Nuku, touch football, 13 to 15 years girls. Please join me in congratulating all Metropolitan West representatives. It is my pleasure to be able to announce the major award winners of the afternoon. I'd like to invite Ms Lawson and Brian to join us on stage to present the first of our major awards. It is with great um, pride, honour and pleasure that I get to announce the sports people of the uh, year this afternoon. As we've touched on, this year has been one like no other. And so the opportunities for people to be able to represent the school, district, region or state has been very, very limited. But the people that are receiving their awards this afternoon very much deserve those honours. So I'm going to start with Junior Sportsman of the Year. We actually have two this year. Both these gentlemen um, have been part of our school swimming carnival. Uh, they represented our school at the district's carnival. And so it's with great pleasure that I announce Alexander Head and Xavier Young as our Young Junior Sportsman of the Year. Yep, up come. So that
Next, we have our Junior Sportswoman of the Year. This young lady has played both summer and winter school uh, inter school sport and was named MVP for both of those teams that she played in. So, without further ado, our Junior Sportswoman of 2020, Tyler Babu. On to our seniors. Our Senior Sportsman of the Year uh, has rep represented at a high level over his years here at Springfield Central. He has represented Met West in both softball and baseball in the year 2020. Can we please congratulate Cooper Gosner as Senior Sportsman of the Year? Last but certainly not least, our Senior Sportswoman of the Year. This young lady is always involved. She always participates in school carnivals, has always put her hand up to represent our school in our inter-school sporting teams. This year she's been named an MVP for one of those teams. So our winner in 2020 Sportswoman of the Year and back-to-back -back winner is Ali Anuku. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Lawson and Brian. I'd now call on Tara Hewitt and Sophie Kay to do our vote of thanks. As our afternoon draws to a close and we reflect on the amazing sports achievements of our students, we would like to thank the many people that have contributed to our student success and to the success of this afternoon. Thank you to our senior leadership team and the School PNC Association for your ongoing support and support in our great school. Um, thank you to our special guest, Brian Curl, for sharing your story and for your invaluable advice that I know our uh, athletes appreciate. Thank you to Rebel Sports Orion for your continued support of Springfield Central State High School. Thank you to Ms. Fletcher, Head of Department, HPE, and Ms. Jenkins, Sports Coordinator, for the countless hours you put in behind the scenes and for organizing tonight's event. Thank you to all of our dedicated staff members who have organized carnivals, coached sporting teams, and supported our students this year. A big thank you to the parents, caregivers, family, and friends of the students of Springfield Central State High School. Without your support, our students would not be as successful as they are. And finally, to the students, congratulations on your amazing achievements this year. We can't wait to see you back next year bigger and better than ever. We'd like to now invite Narlene Tongia and Peyton Kuru Yakafo and all our house captains back to the stage and lead the school song. While these students make their way to the stage, all students and staff in the audience, please stand and sing along.
reach our glory. We are central students. We will learn to do what is right to make this a brighter day and help each other to scale great heights. We strive each day to do our best with responsibility. Relationships, resilience, starting with respect. We are central students. We will learn to do what is right to make this a brighter day and help each other to scale great Thank you to Narlene and our house captains. We are lucky here at Springfield Central to have a large number of teachers who through their own love of sport want to offer you as many opportunities to experience the joys and passion that comes with sport. I would like to offer my sincerest thanks to all the coaches over the year. To Miss Fletcher and our previous sport coordinator, Mr Skinner, for all their hard work in the year of 2020. Congratulations to all the award recipients and we wish you all the best in your future sporting endeavours. Thank you and good afternoon.